They say a picture's worth a thousand words, but a thousand seems like no. When I think about the way you What do you think? To know you is extraordinary. How right it feels for you to be here right now. You have an amazing content. How reliable is your information? <sighs> well, not exactly the reaction I was looking for. <laughs> I've never had an actual role in the day. Are you uncomfortable? Are you kidding? Your barn's like a four-star hotel. <laughs> well, I suppose I could have asked you up to the main house. I guess I just sort of... Sweat me off my feet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Believe me, I'm not complaining. That's kind of why I came up here. So you sweep me off my feet. Well, when you show up like that, looking all... Beautiful like you did, what else can I do? Hey, Nicholas. Yeah. I'm really glad I followed my instincts. Me too. Anyway, I was starting to get really stupid. Don't wait around so that your family would approve of me, right? <laughs> well, they don't get a say in this anymore, okay? In fact, we'll, uh, we'll make a pact. From now on, we only please ourselves. And each other. to a page in a Henry Hank Bowen. I, I, I believe that Hank died when she was a toddler, and Paige died, I know, when Emily was 11 years old. So she was an orphan? Well, I, I don't know. She had an aunt, but she wasn't that close to her, and they didn't connect. But, but hear me out. Monica Quartermain was diagnosed with breast cancer, and she had this treatment done at a treatment center in Arizona. Monica Quartermain, That's right. General Hospital Chief right. of Jack, yeah. And Emily's mother, Paige, was also diagnosed at the same time with breast cancer. So they got to know each other in the treatment center, they bonded, they became friends. Friends enough so that when Paige was dying, she asked Monica if she would take care of Emily for her. It's a lot to ask of someone. That's right, and when Emily was 11 years old, her mother died, Monica got better, and Alan and Monica adopted her. Lucky girl. I was so sure that she was not related to Emily, this Rebecca. I, I swear to God, I thought it was plastic surgery. No, see, there is no evidence in here that Rebecca was ever in a hospital or ever had any plastic surgery. There was an incident where she was in an emergency ward, had several stitches, but that's it. Cut on her hairline? How did you know that? Because that's what I thought the plastic surgery scar was. Uh, God, I'm an idiot. Do you think there's any chance that we'll find Rebecca's birth parents? There's that word again. We. Well, well starving. Amazing sex always makes me hungry. <sighs> really? <laughs> yeah, really. Yeah. What about you? Uh, that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll, I'll tell you what, I'll ask Alfred where, where he got it. Maybe he'll... Tell some up for us for breakfast tomorrow. Hmm. Sounds like um, you're asking me to spend the night. Why not? Uh, no, we don't need to make plans. You know, let's just see what happens moment to moment. You know, there's something to be said for spontaneity, right? I can be spontaneous. So you can. So I was only 11, but I got tired of sitting in the car waiting for my mom to come out of the store. 
right? So I took the spare key out of the glove box and I decided that I was going to drive myself home. At 11? <laughs> yeah, hey, I'd watched other people drive, right? How hard could it be? And I knew that I was going to go really slow, <laughs> which is exactly what I did, but I hadn't really figured out the reverse thing yet, so <laughs> I drove up the curb and through the window of the store. <laughs> did, did anyone get hurt? No, luckily, no. But it was a long, long time before I'd done enough chores to pay off that one. <laughs> okay. um, uh, speaking of driving, I don't think I'm going to be driving myself anywhere tonight. I love this wine. That's good. What is it? It's my favorite. I'd be happy to give you a bottle for my cellar, if you like. Oh, that's okay. There's a nice little liquor store right down the street from Kelly's. But they won't have it, no. will they? No. And if they did, it was probably going to cost me a week's <laughs> salary, right? Yeah, I have it sent from France. Um, I'm glad you like it, though. Can't imagine what it's like to be you. At this moment, yes. But not always. When it's just you out here with your staff and your past to keep you company. And now you don't even have your little boy. He's safe. And that's my top priority where my son is concerned. And don't you feel cut off from the rest of the world? It's, it's by choice, mostly. So I'm not always comfortable with letting people in, you know. And Nicholas, I'll let you in on a little secret. I'm really good at climbing those walls. And I'm very careful once I get over the top. So much for waiting. You don't need to leave, and you need to learn how to knock. The door was open, and it's a stables, Nicholas. I didn't expect to walk in here and see that. And by the way, I can tell you're a woman of your word. It was your idea to make the agreement, and you didn't keep it, did uh, you? Well, you win, Alexis. Great. Good job. Look, I loved spending the day with you. I loved having sex with you. And I don't want another nasty fight with your weirdly territorial aunt, so I'm gonna go, okay? okay. Call me later, thank you. What are you doing here? Well, I had to come back to see you, my dear. We have so much to discuss. No, we don't. Were you raised by wolves? Don't you know it's rude to turn your back when someone is addressing you? I said I'm not interested in anything you have to say. Well, it seems that I've underestimated you. No, I had to assume that you were just a ridiculous little ninny like that dreadful Emily. But you're a far more worthy adversary than I had imagined. Hmm. Well, what's that supposed to mean? It means that Alexis was half right. You are working a scam, aren't you, my dear? Just not with me.